Hello and welcome back to My Mom's Basement presented by 3G and Barstool Sports. It is Robbie and Clem back again for kind of a grab bag edition of the show. We don't have any shows to recap on My Mom's Basement right now. So we were talking about what to do. We did a fun 90s edition of the show last week. Go check that out if you didn't see it. And this week we're going to do kind of a mailbag news episode. We're going to split it. Um, Clem, how you doing? Doing great, Bob. It's like you said, it's settled down a little bit in the basement, but there's going to be a lot of stuff coming. It's going to get a little hot down here, a little spoiler for later in the pod. Um, so it's like a break, but not a break because there's always news in the nerd, nerd world going on. We have a couple things to recap, review, or just, you know, go over. And <laughs> oh, there's just a lot of shit coming. There's just, I feel like there's always just a ton of stuff. It's fucking the other side of Thanos and Endgame. It's his army. It's always that in terms of content <laughs> coming our way. And it's just a matter of when it's going to get here. The next one is She-Hulk next week. I believe it's Thursday. They changed the release date for this one. So instead of Wednesday drops, it's going to be Thursday drops. We'll recap that, of course. I don't know if we're going to recap it in a full podcast form yet, if we're going to do it the Miss Marvel way, which we also never finished our Miss Marvel recaps for the people. I know some people have asked about that. So we could talk a little bit about the ending of Miss Marvel and stuff on this as well, because we just trailed off that, got too busy. Apologies for that. But I thought... Miss Marvel, the first two episodes, I thought were awesome. Mm -hmm. Then it started to get a little slow trail off after that. But then I thought it finished pretty strong, especially with like the post credit scene. Got me real excited for the Marvels. Yeah. So I, we had said the whole time wasn't directed towards us, but I do think that there's enough background stuff in it that is very marvel -y and good, good, well done show. Uh, and I, who is it? They, the people who made it had gotten fired from the, the was it the Batgirl project? Batgirl. They were the and, directors. They made the first two episodes. And our boy Kevin Feige was like, he put a letter. I was like, you guys were awesome. I want everyone to know that. And getting your show canceled or whatever sucks. And it's probably a little embarrassing. But when the man in the hat comes out, the hat man says, you guys are awesome. That is like better than anything, any resume builder you can ever get. You said it, Bob. Post credits was cool. There was some... Um, Decent fight scenes, uh, you know, at the, the in the last episode. But your boy Clem, I just got goose, goosebumps thinking about it. Do, 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 do. Just <laughs> hearing those chimes go on. We're talking mutants right now. I don't know how they're going to all put it together. I'm still not sure how the hell the X-Men are going to come in. It feels like it almost has Kind of our be. first mutant in the MCU. Yeah. I mean, we, we got like Patrick Stewart in Multiverse of Madness, obviously. So like in, in a way that but they haven't really said that word and called someone a mutant like that. And I believe in the comics, and if I'm wrong, people jump down my throat about this. I believe Miss Marvel's an inhuman in the comics. So it's kind of a change yes. for this. And they, yep. they've made some changes to her powers and stuff like that in the MCU. She's a little bit different because I think in the comics, her powers are a little more Mr. Fantastic-like. Um, but Iman Vellani, she's uh, definitely maybe rookie of the year in the MCU, especially when you hear the behind the scenes stories about her and how she's just a fan, like arguing with people on Reddit about theories and stuff. Like I love everything I hear about this girl. She's the anti Gwyneth Paltrow who is like, Oh, I guess so. <laughs> was I with Spider-Man and Tom Holland? Who the fuck is that? Like, th I love that girl, man. She Shout was Miss Marvel her. for Halloween in high school. Like she <laughs> loves this character. <laughs> That's like, it's like you and Connor McGregor. It's like, and just to see you get to do content with him. It just warms my heart. So shout out to her. Shout out to Feige, by the way, because they said that was Feige's idea to throw the X-Men thing in there. So uh, when Clem gets his X-Men, he's going to be a very, very happy person, which I mean, X-Men 97 is coming. But once we get it on the big screen, the casting is going to be probably like the biggest news, I feel, for a while when we get the casting for all that stuff. Well, I believe they're bringing back majority of the, the main cast. Oh, you mean really? X-Men in the MCU? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you meant X-Men 97. I was, I was like, wait, the Bob, cartoon this is, is going to be all the same voices. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> um, you made a reference to Conor McGregor there, which is a, a good transition. Conor McGregor was cast in Roadhouse. They're doing a Roadhouse reimagining. Jake Gyllenhaal is in the lead role, the Patrick Swayze role, and he's playing a former UFC fighter who's hired as a bouncer in Key West. And, you know, like Roadhouse, he has to kind of take control of this bar. And Conor McGregor, I believe, is going to be playing one of the villains, one of the people that he has to fight. It was our boy Justin Kroll with the scoop. So shout out to shout Kroll, out. the god. Um, this is pretty awesome news for me. I know some people have this connection to Roadhouse where they're like, you can't remake Roadhouse. Don't fuck up Roadhouse. 
I was born in 1998. I got no connection to Roadhouse. I've seen it. I think it's a good movie. I like Patrick Swayze a lot. But yet yeah, this just excites me. I'm like, it's a they call they're calling it a reimagining too, which feels almost like they're like, we swear we're not remaking it. Like, chill out, everyone. You have to be very careful. Remake, reboot. If it starts with R E, you have to be very careful about the words that come after it. I I'm almost like terrified. To be to if I went to like up to RA and be like, all right, what do you think about the remake? Like, oh crap, I'll fucking tell you these fucking guys in Hollywood these days. It would be an incredible rant for you know legit cinephiles like RA who loves that stuff, yeah. especially those 80 cult classics and stuff like that. I just watched it for the first time probably like five years ago. I never like growing up, never got into it. I heard you would hear stories or people would make references and blogs about. It. I know uh, Bill Simmons was always talking about Roadhouse and his stuff. And it is like the perfect 80s kind of like silly movie and you got to love Swayze and all that kind of shit. So, and I when you told me you said, do we talk about Conor McGregor? I thought he was playing like the lead in Roadhouse. I was like, wow, this is going to be nuts. <laughs> but being the bad guy, that's the perfect thing. I feel like it's whether Hulk Hogan in the 80s you know, you have all these kind of, uh, you know, either wrestlers, boxers, or now obviously MMA guys. So it's just it's, it's good for the MMA community that they are now just getting their 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 feet into big movies that are going to be a big deal. It's got a good director too. I think it's the guy that directed the first Bourne movie. Uh, I think he did Live Die Repeat or Edge of Tomorrow, the Tom Cruise Emily Blunt movie with two names that was really good. <laughs> Um, so I have some high hopes for it. It's an Amazon Prime movie, too. So it's not like we're going to have to go to the theaters, buy a ticket for this. It's just going to show up for free on your TV. And speaking of movies showing up for free on TV, I saw four movies since our last podcast. I wanted Jesus. to mention them all because they were all pretty good, to be honest. Um, my favorite of which was one free streaming movie on Hulu, Prey. It's the new Predator movie. It's the fifth Predator movie, which I didn't realize. I thought there was way more because Alien vs. Predator, I guess there's two of those. I'm not counting. Um, but the original Predator is classic. Then they haven't really made like a good Predator since. Some people say Predator 2. Predator 2 is kind of, I don't know. Did they make a Predators? They just threw it on like an S at the end of it, like plural yes. nouns? <laughs> yes. And that <laughs> one had like a good idea. But, but not great execution. That one was like they took all these bad villains and they dropped them all on a Predator planet to survive. So it was like kind of a cool idea like that. The last Predator movie stunk the Predator. I didn't even see it, but I saw clips from it and reviews and mm -hmm. like it looked horrendous. This one was awesome. They gave this one to David Trachtenberg, I believe his name is. He was the guy that made 10 Cloverfield Lane. He directed an episode of Black Mirror that was really good. And he just brought it back 300 years. He's like, let's go. Native American Comanche tribe has to fight a predator that comes down onto the planet using, you know, kind of like Ewok technology, if you want to call it that, like hmm. axes, rocks, yeah. stuff like that. And it was badass, Clem. It was like 90 minutes. It's a real quick watch. The simplest plot. There's no little subplots. There's no this. It's like predators after these people. This girl's got to fight the predator. Like they're each hunting each other at this point. It, it ruled. It sucks that I'm so like out of the loop in terms of, you know, movies. If, if something, if a, if a trailer goes viral on Twitter or it's something I like love, like Game of Thrones or something like that, or used to love, I should say, I, I'll catch wind of it. You asked me, oh, I'm, you said to me, oh, I'm going to go see the Elvis movie. I was like, didn't even know there was an Elvis movie out. <laughs> that was <laughs> just, crazy to me. Which is a big the deal. The Elvis movie was everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just in my kids like, Bluey came out this week. It was front page news in the Casa de Clum. And I wrote a blog about it. Um, we also have shirts. So I'll pump the shirts, go in with the Barstool store. I can't believe we have blue shirts in the Barstool store. And every parent was like, oh my God, this is great. I watched it without my wife and there's legit trouble in the house right now, let alone <laughs> watching it without, uh, some people say they watch it without their kids. So I'm completely disconnected. The two movies that have just been, like I've been seeing all over my timeline are Prey and Nope. And I'm like, what the fuck is with these one word uh, movies? And I had no idea that this was even coming out. But as someone that has only watched the first Predator, I could maybe get into Prey. And again, great title. You're kind of going Predator versus Prey, all that stuff. They've done a good job with keeping it very simple. All the titles, even Predators, The Predator. But Prey, just on title alone, like you kind of have me maybe getting into it. And breaking news on the podcast as well, we are finally paying for Prime in the Casa de Clem. We oh, finally, nice. my, my mom has Prime, which I 
just found out after we like got the subscription going that you could add like accounts to the household or something like that. And I'm like, yep. fuck, I wish I had done that. I'm going to have NFL football playing every Thursday night. Uh, and then we're going to have, obviously you get the free shipping and I got myself a PS five. Cause I got to like join the wait list. You get like a, you get, you get an invitation or a chance for an invitation. If you are a prime member, you get kind of like the jump on everyone else. And I ended up just winning it this morning, like a week after I'd signed wow. up. So shout out to a Jeff Bezos. He, I'm a Bezos guy. Be- Be- <laughs> I, I call him Bezos. Actually. I don't know which one's the one I've said. My mom was I think on it's Amazon. Bezos. I think it is Bezos. Right. Yeah. Someone said Bezos recently. I was like, fuck it. I've been saying it wrong for years. Cause I say a lot of Bezos things is funny. Let's go. Let's go on Bezos. <laughs> go I'm Bezos. a Bezos guy. Uh, <laughs> Bartle Bezos or whatever. I've, he's like the devil. You know what I mean? But yeah, I yeah, yeah. I've I've been a guy. I've been I've been an Amazon guy for so long. My mom got in on Amazon early. And when I say got in, I mean she had a membership. We don't have stock or anything. That would be awesome. <laughs> and I've always just I saw like when he takes over the world, I'm gonna be like, yo, man, like my mom is like, you know, account number 0016. Like we were on you guys from day one when you were, I think, still a bookstore. So uh so Amazon Prime streaming on Prime. Okay, I'm fucking in, Bob. You got me in just like that. You sold me. I did see Nope as well. I thought Nope was awesome. I saw Nope get some mixed reviews. I thought it was really good. Not as good as Get Out, but better than his last movie, Us, which I, I thought was also entertaining, but just Us trailed off at the end, and I didn't I like the end. I didn't see Us. I fucking love Get Out. My wife and I both love Get Out. Every time I hear... um What's the name of that childish Gambian? Redbone. Every oh, time Red I hear Bone. Redbone, I think of that. And I was like, and I was like, shit, am I going to go to the movies and see Nope? And nope, that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, but I'm trying to get into as many streaming things. Like you said, we got Prime. Why did we get Prime, Bob? A, for shipping, obviously. But B, we got the boys. The boys. And we crushed three seasons of it in like three weeks max, which for parents is like world record shit. Impressive. That doesn't happen, yeah. that doesn't happen often. I- I'll just say this. It surpassed the lofty expectations I had from it, from you, from all the people in the basement who have been telling me to get it. For anyone that hasn't watched it, maybe I'll let you guys, if you if you need Prime, maybe I could get you on the account, let you get, get this <laughs> it. it. It's honestly, I think it's the best show that's currently on TV right now. And I don't take that kind of shit, you know, lightly saying that. But for me, it's probably my favorite show currently on television i could probably name like three other shows that are currently on tv holy fuck it was god i said to everyone even like my parents are recommending to just give it the first 15 minutes if you're not hooked yeah. by then you're 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 not gonna get like you will get hooked but like i'll give you that much just give me one bite and you're fucking hooked same with the show awesome awesome show and jose we gotta get jose to watch i know he didn't like the comic books, but this is different it has to be different because there's no way he could hate something this good a lot of people want a uh, butcher to play Wolverine. What do you think about that? Sold thousand percent. I, I love <laughs> that. I don't, I thought it was Benicio del Toro when I was like watching on TV and I'm like, and I'm like, Oh, I know this guy's like significantly more badass than Benicio del Toro. He's like, much younger <laughs> at this point. But that guy's awesome. I don't know any of their names, but every single ca- they're like, who's your favorite character? I'm like, it changes every episode. There's yeah. even the shitty guys are so shitty that they're awesome. Uh, in like, you know, evil way. So, uh, 10 out of 10, if, if you guys are in the basement, you haven't watched the boys yet, trust me, just you'll, you'll catch up and you'll be hooked to that shit. Some what else did you movies. see, Bob? I was going to say some other movies I saw that I could recommend. The Black Phone, if you're into horror movies. This is an Ethan Hawke horror movie that was made with a pretty low budget and made a ton of money. Um, really creepy. Like super. This was like my worst fear as a kid was like getting kidnapped by a creepy guy and held hostage in a creepy basement. That's what The Black Phone is. And huh. it, it, it's another one that like doesn't go on too long. It's 90 minutes. It, it's pretty quick. Um, the unbearable weight of massive talent, the Nicolas Cage, Pedro Pascal movie. Pretty funny. I didn't think it was as funny as some people said. Like, I think Caleb said it was like the funniest movie of the last 10 years. He went to go see it in theaters two or three times. Maybe I didn't get the same experience not seeing it in a theater full of people laughing with me. But I was I just thought it was an enjoyable watch. I was like, all right, this is fine. And then Bullet Train. I went to go see uh, the new Brad Pitt movie, Bullet Train, in theaters two, two days ago. Um, good movie, fun movie, kind of like Tarantino inspired in a lot of ways, crazy violent in some ways that I didn't expect. Brad Pitt is also always awesome in movies. This movie was definitely too long. It just kept going <laughs> on. It was like fun, but like it, it had an ending and it just kept going past it. We've experienced that a few times with some of the shows we've had to review or, you know, it's like, yeah. or even the movies were like, ah, they probably could have like snipped. 15, not, not a, minutes. not a bad watch though. Like 
you know, maybe don't rush to the theater to see it. But when it comes out on streaming, when it's free, if you, you're you looking for a crazy action movie to throw on, it's got a really good cast, like tons of tons of great actors in the cast and crazy cameos. Like people show up in it where you're like, holy fuck, this actor's really? in it? Yeah. So that. it's like it, it's a lot of fun in that way. Flat up, didn't even know it was a movie. You could have told me Bullet Train yeah. came out in 1964, 1994, <laughs> I believe you. Had no idea it was even a thing. <laughs> That's one of the bigger summer blockbusters of this year. I God would say. damn it, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was hoping maybe, like, I guess any Brad <laughs> It's a $95 million dollar action movie, which is crazy. Uh, like, usually they don't put $95 million into a random action movie. John Wick 3, I saw, had a budget of 70 mil. Oh God! I, there's John Wick four coming out, right? I know that. I know yeah, that is like yeah. in the works. Okay. Have you so seen the Wick movies? I saw the first two, and I thought they were people like ironically like them, like they're so bad they're good. But then I just they like they like that kind of thing, and I was like, oh yeah, I can fuck with this. So I don't know why I haven't seen. I don't think I've seen three's three. good. Yeah, three's I good. I, I, I saw three next to Sway from Sway in the Morning. Really? <laughs> yeah, he was in our theater. Me, Jeff, D. Lo, Ken Jack, and Sway. And Sway. Oh yeah. God, I, I could just be a, a fly on the wall for a Jeff D. Lowe and Sway conversation. That would be just incredible, <laughs> incredible stuff. I have one recommendation. I'm I'm more into the shows because again, actually, I did see a movie. I saw Top Gun finally, and I'm very oh, proud nice. to say it. And awesome movie, right? Yeah, everyone. The thing is, people definitely built it up. They're like, "This is great. You have to see it in the theater." I just saw the '80s movie with my wife probably about a month ago. And it was so unbelievably like cheesy and corny. And I never watched people like Clem, you fucking grew up when Top Gun like came out. How have you never seen it? Any bold like me who played an NES game, you was impossible to land that fucking plane in the game. And I said, I'm never going to watch this movie. Fuck this movie. And seeing it now for the first time, like 30 years after it came out, it's almost 40 years. It's absolutely like it, it's kind of campy. It's corny, but it's fun. It's just good, clean American fun. This new movie. I will say the first half of it, I was like, man, these aren't going to hit those expectations. The last hour, every single box was checked. It fucking nailed it. Boom, boom, boom. See it in the IMAX if you can. I don't even know if it's even out. Tom Cruise went ahead and saved the goddamn uh, box offices all by himself. And the guy's a fucking superstar. And then streaming, uh, I'll give one recommendation. Uh, Rico Bosco and Dante both blogged about The Bear. It's a Hulu oh, I've show. Heard about it. They Everyone blog, keeps telling me to watch it. They put in, they submitted blogs at like at within an hour of each other. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, did this show just premiere? I guess it just got picked up. Maybe that's why it was in the news. But I like it's I guess it had been out for a little while. And uh it's based in Chicago. It's like about a, a beef restaurant, like Chicago beefs, like what we sell. Go to your JP Graziano's, get your Chicago uh free plug here on the pod. And Oh man, we're two episodes in and it is incredible. So it's Hulu. I have a month preview of Hulu. I will be, I will most like more than likely not be resubscribing to Hulu. However, I did see Prey is on there as well. So I'll be watching yeah, Prey watch at home. Prey. So yeah. two, it's a two, quick movie. Days. Like I said, it's literally 90 minutes. Wow. Oh, speaking now we're speaking my language. Parenting, it's like 90 minutes or in and out. I can I might fall asleep for five minutes on it. Perfect. There are a few things I appreciate as much as a good 90 minute movie nowadays. I think that's part of the reason I love Thor Love and Thunder so much. I was like, that was a fucking quick in and out. Even though I wanted some more, it was like, all right, it was quick in and out. Saw it in yep. theaters three times, barely realized. I can't wait till that just comes on Disney Plus and I just throw it on in the background as um and again, all the things we said during the review, I do think they still could add a 10 minutes worth of yeah. gore and Natalie Port and, and, and Jane stuff. But other than that. Like just, I think it'll, it'll it's a movie that will age well, especially because the fucking Rotten Tomato meter was completely wonky. Yeah. when I had it near like Dark World. Like, what are we talking about here, people? Uh, some DC news. They're weighing three options for the Flash. Apparently, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. The three <laughs> options: one, have Ezra Miller come out and do like a tell-all apology interview. That's the dumbest idea of all time. So let's throw that one out the window right away. There's no, two options. Light it on fire first, then throw it out the window. <laughs> yeah, there's two options. Uh, have him do no press whatsoever and release the movie and be like, fuck it. What happens, happens. He's recast undoubtedly in future movies. This will mm -hmm. be his last movie, but we're just putting it out. Two, scrap the movie altogether. Get your tax returns. It's $200 million already put into it. <gasps> Crazy. I mean, crazy that this is where we are. But Ezra Miller just can't stop doing Ezra Miller shit. He was just arrested for burglary again. Uh, he's getting arrested for this, getting arrested for that. He did the, the dude's like basically an international terrorist, super villain. 
I don't know he's what a, the fuck you do. He's a super villain playing a superhero. He basically is like half the characters in the boys. He's half the soups in the <laughs> yeah, boys. Yeah. He just is always getting in trouble and they have PR nightmares every five minutes. The one, like you're at $2 million, $100 million at this point, like just deep fake someone else's face on him. It can't be that hard. I bet like. That's what Nick Hamilton said. Yeah. Well, he was like, deep fake technology is getting so good right now. Like, I actually don't hate that idea. Like, do, yeah, Grant Gustin, the guy that plays him on the CW. Like, everyone loves that guy. So why not, you know, give him a promotion? Yeah. And you just, you don't have to do research. You just, you know, Nick Hamilton can fucking literally We'll all ignore it, it, you know? You don't even have to address it in the movie. We'll just yeah. ignore it. We'll yeah, be like, like, all right, we get it. And if, like, you, if you guy. scrap it, like, we're going to want to see the movie. Eventually, if you scrap it, it's there's going to be some part of me that's like, but what did Michael Keaton back his Batman look like? You know, like, yeah. I want I want to see that. And it's apparently testing really well. That's the difference between oh, this and God. Batgirl, I think, is I don't think Batgirl was testing very well, and this is testing very well. They cannot catch a break at DC. They actually have something that tests well, and the, the, the fucking actor in it is a real life supervillain. Like it's a unreal. real life supervillain. Like <laughs> doing things that I've never seen anyone do ever. <laughs> I tweeted, day. like, remember I tweeted last week, like, we're due for a crazy Ezra Miller headline any day now. Eight days later, I think it was like arrested again. He's got babies committing crimes for him now. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he's a real life. He's like the acting version of Antonio Brown at this point where it's like, it's crazy. Right, we're due yeah. for a story. I need hubs would like blog shit. And I'll be like, wait, didn't he just blog this? week? go. It's like, oh no, he did something else. That is an absolute preposterous fucking sentence to write out and say it. And listen, if you're an actor, you could be crazy. You got to be better than Ezra Miller though, to be this fucking crazy, in my opinion. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? So it's like if Brad Pitt does shit like that, it's like, all right, Brad, you have the fucking, you know, hardware on the shelves. This guy does not have it. I don't know. Does Brad Pitt even have a war? He might have awards, but he's Brad fucking Pitt. It's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Ezra also, Miller. I saw cool some name. rumors that oh. Ezra Miller got punched in a bar in Japan by the guy that played Elvis, Austin <laughs> Butler. You could just fill in a Mad Libs at this point with Ezra Miller, and I believe it every single time. So that's yeah. like a headline. You you could go uh, celebrities in Hollywood or Times Square. Elvis punches the flesh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, some more DC news. This is actually not bad news about DC. So let's highlight it. Idris Elba has teased a, a really big project with DC. Obviously, he was in the Suicide Squad. He played Bloodsport. He made it through the end of that movie. He did survive. Spoiler alert. He's got a daughter in that movie. That's kind of the, the storyline with him. Kind of a, a Deadshot-like thing with the daughter relationship. Maybe another James Gunn, Peacemaker-style television show. Maybe Suicide Squad 2. I don't know. That seems like it, we would probably hear about it. It would trickle out because that's such a that's a really big project. I think a Bloodsport TV show could work, especially after seeing Peacemaker. Like, I'm not really going to doubt James Gunn after that. Yeah, so, I mean, get the meme ready. Here it is. Leaking coming out. <laughs> Boom. DC just slaps James Gunn on it, and it fixes all the problems. I, in the Suicide Squad, if you go back to the review, I, I was like, I liked Idris Elba and John Cena in there, but I just didn't feel, it didn't like catch me as much as I thought it would. But Pacemaker was like one of my favorite shows on all TV this yeah. year. So his own solo show with big Jimmy Gunn in, in the mix, like I'm in, you have, you have my eyeballs for at least, you know, the first three episodes. And unless you absolutely DC it, which I don't think James Gunn even has the ability to do. He's I like, D he he's DC proof. That's how you know James <laughs> Gunn is good. He's DC proof. Uh, so yeah, whether it's, it's a show, it's a movie, it's a suicide squad too. If you have James Gunn in it, I'm in. I like Idris Elba enough that I think I'd be in no matter what though, uh, for whatever yeah. the project may be, even if James Gunn isn't attached, but there is going to be like a smell if it's no James Gunn and DC's involved. I'm be like, all right, how are you guys going to fuck this one up this time? It, it's on Bob. We do not want this to be like this. We do not want to be yeah, like, no. Esther Miller can't stop getting arrested. They're canceling projects that are $90 million. It's like at some point, we look like the assholes if we're not calling them out on their shit. When you just strip it down to the characters, literally just take the characters. I am a DC over Marvel guy. You are? I, like, that, that's where it breaks my heart the most. Like, I have Batman tattooed on my arm. I love the Bat family. I want to see these people succeed. And, you know, we got the Batman. So it's like, you know, we'll go over Marvel and DC mid-year reviews later on in the podcast. Yep. Uh, some more DC news, though. Lady Gaga will officially co-star in Joker 2. 
weird. This is, <laughs> this is going to be strange. It's going to be a musical. Yeah, I'm I'm not super musical? into it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a musical. It's described as I saw a tweet said it was it's more Star Is Born than West Side Story. Now I had a tweet or a blog actually a full blog years ago at this point when Joker came out. There was rumors. Oh my god, it made almost a billion dollars. Are we going to make Joker two? And I said I don't think you can make a Joker two with this character that you've established. Because Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, it's a good character. I don't know if it's a good Joker in terms mm -hmm. of I don't think this is a guy who could ever challenge Batman to a fight or who could ever outsmart Batman in any way. And some people have said, well, he's the guy who just inspires the eventual Joker or whatever. It's also weird, the timeline of Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. He would be like 70 by the time Batman was an adult. So it, it's just strange when you say we're doing it as a trippy musical. I go, okay, I'll give it a shot because maybe it's a fever dream and they could do something crazy with it. Todd Phillips, though, doesn't have the best reputation on sequels when you look at The Hangover 2 and 3. Yeah, I was going to say the same exact thing. Ooh. I could live with Hangover 2. I wasn't thrilled when I left the movie theater. Yeah. Hangover 3, I was offended. I felt like I was wrong. <laughs> I felt like someone took my wallet out of my pocket and took, let's see, $20. Plus, I probably got popcorn and a cherry Coke. So, like $40 out of my wallet and I put it back <laughs> in. Just put James, James Gunn on the project. Like, sorry, Todd, yeah. you lost it. We're just putting James Gunn on this, like everything else for the DC universe for the foreseeable future. And you know what? I, I'm at the point where it's like, if James Gunn really is done with uh, the Guardians after uh, three, it's like, you should just go for it, man. Get that bag and fucking like lock it up unless you don't want to do superhero movies. But in that case, DC, make him say no to the number that he yeah. should, no one can ever say no to. I just saw they want their own Kevin Feige. Like it's there was a thing that came out that said they're searching for like a Kevin Feige. I know Greg Berlant. I think his name's Greg Berlanti. He's the guy that does all the CW shows. Mm -hmm. They were like thinking about promoting him because he's done. I will say the CW shows like him or not. He's done a good job at creating a connected universe and establishing an actual fan base like those shows Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl. They have a fan base on Twitter that's like pretty, pretty vocal and he's done a good job with a very, very, very limited budget, you know, like very, very l little resources. So if you promoted him, I do think he would probably do a good job. I mean, he did a Crisis on Infinite Earths saga for the CW where he brought in Kevin Conroy to play an old Bruce Wayne. And he brought hmm. in Brandon Routh to play a different version of Superman. And he brought in ezra miller's flash before he was canceled <laughs> and it was like holy shit they're bringing in like the dceu and that was all greg berlanti so if he gets promoted cool james gunn does seem like the obvious choice to me like because i just want to see what he does as well like what would james gunn do with control of characters like superman and batman he doesn't even have to make the movies but him just being the kevin feige of those movies the last when when uh, Superman finally shows up at the end of Peacemaker, a little spoiler for it. It's like one of the funniest lines. Like I've laughed hardest in my life at that point. I have my sports analogy for the episode too. Greg Berlanti, this is what he is. He had circa 2004, the Boston Red Sox, or it might have been 2003, whenever, whenever they hired Theo Epstein. But the Boston Red Sox are looking for a GM. And Greg Berlanti is Billy Bean out in Oakland making things work with a shit budget. And it's like this fucking team, all they do is goddamn win. And whatever he's doing, whatever <laughs> vision, whatever his like brain, the way it works, he's able to make fucking, you know, nice, delicious cake out of shit rest out of shit ingredients. You bring that guy to Boston with that fucking payroll and this guy could, you know, win a ton of World Series. Obviously, it never happened with Billy Bean. But Berlanti is – it sounds like he's that dude in uh, the entertainment industry. So shout out to him. So I, I definitely like him. Yeah? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'll have the, we'll have the DC people either agree with us or jump down our throats either way. Uh, but – Something needs to change. It's just something needs it. Something yeah. probably needs to change at the top. Plus, like that whole weird stuff with the HBO Max. I don't know where these projects are even going to be, but that's even a bigger issue than just DC. Um, some Marvel news now we can get into. I Am Groot is out. We talked about this months ago when it was initially announced, probably over a year ago when it was announced. It's just five little animated shorts about Groot, baby Groot specifically, take place right after Guardians of the Galaxy 1. And they're all about three minutes. It says five minutes on Disney Plus, but like all other Disney Plus shows, half the fucking runtime is credits. Crazy. <laughs> These credits on Disney Plus shows. I watched all five right before we started. It's it's adorable. 
That's how I would describe it. They're adorable little shorts. They remind me of the Disney shorts that would play before a Disney Pixar movie. Yep. And if you like Groot, if you like Guardians of the Galaxy, this is a great way to spend 15 minutes. Your kids will love them. This is, you know, you, this is one of those things you can't really fuck up. Yeah. Uh, so I watched the first one right before we went live. I had a chance to check it out yet because, again, they dropped this and they dropped I Am Groot and Bluey Season 3 the same day. <laughs> My kids, they will sit in front of the TV for hours, but we can't just let them do that. And Bluey takes precedent in this house as much as we love our sweet baby Groot. Uh, so we watched the first episode together. And you, th that was the exact thought I had. It's like the Pixar shorts you get before the movie. It has that uh, like little dark Guardians humor. That's a, like, ooh, yep. like, but the kid that goes over the kids' heads, but the parents can enjoy it. It's the perfect show for all ages. And if you want to know how much these things probably cost Disney, that credits just lets you know. It's it's longer than the <laughs> yeah. actual show. So, so many people probably had their hands in this fucking thing. And that's why, uh, you know. Disney Plus, and we'll get into the grades later. Disney or, or Marvel has not been like a perfect year, but just little things like this is just nice. And I, I, I fucking love yeah, it. Yeah, more like, things like this. I would love more shorts. They used to do one shots, they called them, where it was like a little short that went along with every DVD release. It was like a little 10-minute yep. short movie or whatever. More of that stuff. I love that stuff. Little two-minute shorts. Give us a, a Zemo short for 30 seconds. Like Stuff like that goes a long way with the fan base. Big time. There's, a, I believe, a Funko Pops kind of looking uh, short series. Might be two seasons long. It's probably like a minute episode, probably about eight a season. And I'll watch it with the kids. And it's it's funny. There's usually some references that have to do with the MCU that like maybe the kids don't get, but the parents can enjoy. It's funny. It's kind of like the Lego. I always love when yep. Lego does stuff. You know, they crush it. Uh, we went to Legoland, by the way, in New York. Fucking great time if anyone ever wants to go to Legoland. A good way to spend a time with a day with the kids. Uh, and th this Groot shit, man. It's like, it's, I, I got You'll me a little enjoy more. enjoy the, the next four you're really going to like. Yeah, Some are then... better than others. I think the, my favorite was uh, Groot Takes a Bath. It was really fun. <laughs> Mike, and the, I got to the point, too, where I was like, all right, I'm going to go record the podcast now. There's four more. Don't you watch these without me. This is a, fam <laughs> this is a family thing here, and I don't want them to see it uh, without me. I, my kids, my, my, I think my wife asked me, um, what is your favorite Groot? So we have old Groot. We have newborn Groot at the end of Guardians 1 in the little pot. In the you pot, have, yeah. You have baby Groot in Guardians 2. You have older Groot in Infinity War and Endgame because he got snapped away, so he doesn't really get mm -hmm. older. And then I guess you have like a little bit older Groot in Love and Thunder. So which is yeah. your favorite Groot? How do you not go Guardians to Baby Groot? I, I think it's such like it's a slam dunk. I compare him to Baby Yo in my world, and that is I know, love especially when he's favorite. wearing wearing the maroon like jumpsuit as Baby Groot. That's adorable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like just the little things where he's you know pressing the same pointing to the same button and rockets yelling at him it just has such good memories of that that's why i love that movie yeah. so much so yeah two baby group fans here and then another marvel thing she hulk comes out next week are we excited i am excited i am i don't know if the word cautiously optimistic is even because i'm not even optimistic i'm cautiously like ready i guess for it because i have there, there is a lot of like it seems like there's already backlash brewing but that just might yeah. be people that the cg like doesn't look great that, the that's CG the one doesn't thing look too great. yep the humor can fall flat on its face or can power the show i also i think there's a chance based on our conversation with jose which if anyone hasn't listened to it jose gave us a full breakdown of everything that's coming in the next few phases of the mcu and a lot of the comic book stuff that drives it and I do feel like we're going to have some pretty cool cameos and I'm hoping Marvel's just going to start yep. again. They have two minute fucking long uh, credits for shorts. Just start throwing big name actors that are playing big characters. And let's just get like, feel like we're living in this universe where you don't know who's showing up. Give me some. And I think pain. that is going to be maybe one of the things we could look forward to in this. I feel yes. like I'm looking forward to, I feel bad saying it, but the non she Hulk stuff in she Hulk the most like the yeah. breaking the fourth wall and possible Kevin Feige cameo. The, seeing Megan the stallion playing herself just because I'm confused about that. And I want to see how that fits into the MCU fold, uh, the daredevil stuff, the Wong stuff, the abomination stuff, the Mark Ruffalo Hulk stuff. Yep. Like there's a lot of things to be excited about, but every time I see she Hulk in her, she Hulk form, there is part of me that goes, Oh, so that is the final CGI. Like when the first trailer was released, I was like, everyone chill out. There's no way that's the final CGI. Yeah, but it is. It and is. I saw a report that said on Twitter, like Marvel's 
thinking of redoing their CGI like uh, outlook because they've had backlash recently. Good. Like, I think that that's always a good thing. Like, not that fans should, should, you know, cause this backlash and drive it, but they're basically saying we want our CGI to look better. Like, yeah, you should be driven to want that. That look at uh, ILM, like George Lucas, the whole documentary just came out on Disney Plus. Like, the stuff that they pushed forward to breakthrough, like, that's how breakthroughs happen. Yeah. And you can't, like, when you're, when you're the lead dog at Marvel, you can't settle for, for, silver medals in anyone's eyes you have no. to be the leader of the pack because that's just what you are and I, again trust the foggy trust the process everything's going to be fine uh House hopefully she hulk I'm not, I'm not putting <laughs> she hulk definitely going to be fine though i'm just going to say that no, i'm just saying yeah. for the we'll long-term see. big picture stuff it's like the mets may lose a game but with uncle stevie in charge everything's going to be all right i think it's a half an hour show as well i saw that thank God. times yeah thank you give me like 25 minutes with the and because when we're reviewing stuff i'm just like man I, I i can't really finish this right now <laughs> yeah um house of the dragon reviews are out uh, apparently it's better than game of thrones or breaking bad <laughs> We're starting with, you know, short bars to clear here right now. Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad, which might be in my Mount Rushmore. I know Sopranos and The Wire are in there, and those are probably the four. Breaking Even with- Bad's my 1A, like, and I don't know if I have a 1B. Like, then it's your one, Bob. Top. That's how one A and one B is. Are you just saying, yeah, it's but it's, it's just even more, yeah, even yeah. higher than one. It's 1A. It, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it's like it's a platinum medal it's not even yeah. on the stand it's so much yeah. better than everything else i like that uh i i do think i have, would you say game of thrones is in your mount rushmore after the way they crashed the landing because it's a no, fair no because i also didn't have like i didn't that's have, true you like, didn't have as much yeah. of a connection i didn't watch through the whole series i caught up and then just watched the season finale i i watched an old episode one day um, I think I, I wasn't feeling good and I was like, you know what? Let's just watch like it was the one. Oh, it was after the goddamn dog walk draft where they didn't draft Cersei Lannister as an HBO character. I was so mad. So I watched the episode where she the Sep Baylor or whatever. And I was like, holy fuck, that was so good. And I'm like, man, this show and like they completely botched it, but it wasn't like. Un, it, it's actually probably unwatchable garbage. Well, listen, as a Star Wars fan, I'm used <laughs> to like everything I love getting shit on at some point by a different series. I'm going to get prequel stand at me for that one. Uh, but I, I am ready to give Game of Thrones another shot. IndieWire saying yeah. better, better than Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad. I respect the clickbait game, but you are doing the people that made House of the Dragon no fucking favors by, no. by throwing that one out there. And we're going to cover House of the Dragon on My Mom's Basement. So look forward to that. If you're a Game of Thrones fan or if you know Game of Thrones fans that don't listen to the podcast, this could be your way to to bond with them. You know, you reach out to them. You're like, hey, this podcast covers Game of Thrones. Let's listen to it together. Boom. That's how we keep the basement lights on. Going in the basement with the boys. Yeah, so I, I, I've been talking to Kevin for a few months about, because he had been telling me, hey, I think we might be bringing Game of Stools back, blah, blah, blah. And I said, all right. I said, if, if sales sells it and we get the podcast, we have the feed all there, ready to rock and roll. We covered uh, six of the worst fucking episodes of television I ever had to watch in my life for it. And I guess we did pretty good numbers. It would be good to watch a good show. But I haven't heard anything, which is very Barstool, right? Barstool will never change. Yep. Our internet will always suck. We'll never know what projects are actually going live until like the morning of. So Kev said, I said, is it cool if we cover it in the basement? Because we're the fucking nerd show. And he said, yep. So hopefully we'll have KFC on. I believe we said Big Daddy Trent. I'd love to have, I would love to have had Coley on, but that motherfucker is just ditching us. He's fucking, uh, See he's red wedding our ass. So yeah, that's a, going into the du- wild, wildlings. That's a, a honker too. A honker just left. I know. Yeah, he left us for the wildlings, wherever the fuck. I don't even know where Coley's ending up. So but uh, the honkers uh, will be competing in, in the next season of the dozen. I'll just say yeah. that. Uh, so either going are you going two man or are you gonna is there a th- will a third be announced at some point i kind of was I, I could i could is I there could a third me- man it's like the nwo th- <laughs> <laughs> i i would love to hear you be like mincy should we just go with two people or get three i'll tell you bob i'll do it two of us just me you it's all that matters like you can get mincy all like <laughs> into a lather going from that but yeah so i we were talking about it before we went live I don't know if we could maybe do like a post show, maybe a half hour after the show ends, just so we get our notes in order. We go live on the the channel, which would be good for the channel. And again, if we have a couple bar stool guests on, I mean, I forget that me and me and Charlie Wisco were doing Game of Thrones recaps like season four or five. It was crazy. He had all these awesome nicknames for me. So shout out Charlie Wisco. Um, shout out Charlie Wisco. I we, haven't 
heard that name in, in a while, but I now, that is well. a name. Now, that is a name <laughs> I haven't heard in a while. Yeah, he's a he's a Star Wars fan. He's a good dude, my guy Charlie Wisco. So hopefully, if it's not back in Game of Thrones, it will be in the basement. We'll have people on. Um, it's crazy. It always boggles my mind that Barstool never like puts everything behind the biggest show on TV, which was Game of Thrones for like four years. It was me and Charlie Wisco talking on a free SoundCloud that we would like create new accounts to get like another like six episodes worth of free uh you know internet space so it's it's a little more official in the basement but still completely barstool we're flying by the seat of our pants are you excited for this show right now like how are you oh, yeah. one to ten oh, where are yeah. you right now uh seven seven i don't want to okay. put myself like eight nine ten because that makes me seem like a game of thrones diehard who's like constantly thinking about it yep. it's not like in the forefront of my brain but every time it comes up i'm very excited for it because i feel like of course Game of Thrones can be good again. Like, there's some people that are just, like, so out on this. Nope, Game of Thrones is ruined. And it's like, the fuck are you talking about? That's like saying, like, I'll never watch The Mandalorian because yep. I didn't like The Phantom Menace. It's like, what are you talking about? Like, it's just, it's an awesome universe. I want to see more in this universe. It's got a good cast. The effects look awesome. Dragons fucking everywhere. How are you going to be out on a show with dragons everywhere before you <laughs> I, even see it? I choose to believe when you said dragons fucking ever, you mean dragons fucking <laughs> everywhere. Like they're just banging in the background. No, Bob's doing, the, that's what you got to do on YouTube. You see Bob Fox do some uh, sex hand stuff. I am an eight. And it's only because people who have read the, cause these have the books, which means mm-hmm. like spoilers are out there, which I, I hate. And they said, this is, this could be fucking awesome. The books are great. George yeah. R. R. Martin is involved. So that's always a big thing. They, when George R. R. Martin wasn't involved, that's when the show started falling off a cliff. He's involved with all these. He's, he's given his blessing so far on what he's seen. He says, everything's good. So uh, like, I mean, trust George R. R. Martin was basically the old trust the foggy. And then I, I, I think the way it's almost like with my guy, I don't want to compare Daniel Jones to the game of Thrones. Cause that's an absurd statement as much as I love the Dan wagon, but Daniel Jones on the Giants last year, he was all right, not great. Uh, like, I thought the offense sucked. But then when Daniel Jones got hurt, they were the worst football team I've ever seen in my life. That's what it looked like when George R. R. Martin left Game of Thrones. They, like, turned into, like, the worst TV show we've ever seen. So, with yeah. George R. R. Martin in the fold, I think I think we're going to have a good show here. So, yeah, August 28th is when it, when it debuts. And uh, we'll have it here in the basement either Sunday night or probably pretty – early on Monday for you guys. Uh, unless someone at Barstool tells us we can't do it, then we're all fucked. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to a concert this week, Clem, on Tuesday night. Game Time actually sent me to see Rage Against the Machine at the Garden. It's the first time I ever saw Rage Against the Machine. They've been broken up, broken up for like the majority of my adult life. So it was oh. it was a dream for a long time to see Rage Against the Machine for me. They've been broken up since, I think, 2011. So it had been years. They announced they were coming back in 2019. They said, we're coming back in spring of 2020. They did not come back in spring (laughs) of 2020 uh, or spring of 2021 or spring of 2022. The tour kicked off this summer and it was an unbelievable show. Thanks to Game Time. I was there. Game Time, if you're not aware, is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute tickets on uh, sports, concerts, shows, Broadway shows, whatever you're looking to go to, whatever you could buy tickets to on a normal ticketing website, Game Time has available. And it's a massive concert year. They have listed a ton of artists here that you can see for as low as $9. Halsey, as low as $9. Machine Gun Kelly, 8 bucks. Backstreet Boys, 20 bucks. Oh. Uh, Jack White, 25 There's There's a ton of amazing artists. The Killers, Zach Brown Band. So many tours are going on right now. And... Uh, Rage Against the Machine at MSG was absolutely insane. That's the one I would recommend if you're listening to this. They have a couple more shows at MSG this week. And then they unfortunately had to cancel all of the UK dates that they were they were about to go straight to the UK. Zach De La Rocha fucked up his foot on the second night of tour. So he was just sitting on a, a gearbox the whole show, just sitting down. Clem, he brought more energy sitting than 99% of people bring Stanton. Him doing the hand motions, like rapping the songs, the whole crowd bouncing up and down, mosh pits. I had two gay guys in front of me, 40-year-old gay couple, I want to say, maybe 45. They looked like they just bought tickets to like get a new, they were like, we heard this is crazy, so we're here. Didn't appear to be Rage Against the Machine fans. They were taking videos of the mosh pits with these looks on their faces like, <laughs> oh my god what the fuck they turned to the guy next to me right before the show started they said i heard that they get a little political and the guy next to me was like uh yeah 
immediately it said like abort the supreme court on the screen they were like yeah okay yeah this is a political show you're there you're here to see fuck the police the band you know it's it's rage against the machine i always love when people say that about rage against the machine and it's like you fucking morons what do you think the machine that they're <laughs> raging against is you goddamn morons <laughs> yeah um so go to the app store on your phone get the game time app Create an account, redeem code MMB. You'll get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time, the last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I'm looking to use Game Time next week as well. MetLife Stadium, we've got Red Hot Chili Peppers coming to town. So uh, look at that. Game Time, there's tons of tons of uh, concerts you could go see. It's funny too, because I think a lot of people, I think KB said it the other day. It's like a lot of people see us at the games, but they don't realize it does concerts too. So yeah. uh, I wish I had known, you know, uh, the Backstreet Boys tickets down to twenty dollars. That's a fucking steal because that's a lot more than I, uh, you know, <laughs> some of the other concerts. And my wife is a diehard Backstreet Boys fan, as you guys know. Dana White was at Rage last night, and after the show, Tim Comerford gave him his bass. They all signed the bass and gave it to Dana White as like a present for him. Oh, that's pretty sick. badass. All right, <laughs> this now life let's is pretty do, good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. Let's do uh, mid-year reviews for Marvel and DC. Should we start with Marvel or DC? We'll start with Marvel because I feel like it might get mean with DC if we start with them and then we're just like, you know, picking yeah. on them. But yeah. I don't think it's actually going to be as bad as I think about it, the longer I think about it. So I graded everything. I okay. gave like kind of school grades for everything. Starting with Moon Knight, I gave a B minus. I think that's I wanted fair. a little bit more out of Moon Knight. Um, I wanted Strange. more Moon Knight. I wanted more Moon that's, Knight. Yeah. Just give me more of the character Moon Knight. It was a good show. Moon so Knight it's is... still it's still in the B's because enjoyable show. Oscar Isaac, sick performance. Ethan Hawke was great. More Moon Knight is what I wanted. I, I almost want to give it a C plus right now, or like even I, a C. I, I thought about going there, but I was like, eh, I'm not gonna. Watch. I'm thinking if if you watch, all right, what would you think you would have given Moon Knight if you hadn't? Uh, heard the jose interview that we were obviously in with him about moon knight i that honestly wanted to give it like a d like i, like, I don't know what the fuck <laughs> I, was going but on. you know what's crazy is when we when we said that last time so many people were like moon knight was my second favorite mcu show yeah and that's that's true that's fair um i'm gonna stay i'm i i i feel like when i when i was watching it i was pretty cool with it the longer it's been a while so b minus is fine though I'm, there's nothing to argue there uh doctor strange in the multiverse of madness i really flip-flopped a lot on this one but I, I wound up going with a b just a yep. flat b i'm right there with you i'm right there with you. i think i think we poisoned the well on dr strange because it was the multiverse of madness we thought all these characters were going to come in it it might have been that case if you know if, if it had happened before covid or right after infinity war or uh, endgame but i do think the last two years kind of maybe took a little of the shine off it but it, i still that fucking um the Illuminati, the Illuminati scene is awesome. Yeah. I love one it. of the best scenes in the MCU. Uh, Miss Marvel, I gave a C plus. Yep, I said a, just a, a notch below Moon Knight. I would put it, and, and that say, again, it, it comes down to like it's just not made for us. It's on a curve, right? It's like yeah. I'm sure if uh, there's a 12 year old basement boy or girl, listen being like fucking old losers. They're calling Bob Fox an old loser. <laughs> is it? How times have changed? How times it, have changed? If, if the show kept up the quality of the first episode, though, the first two episodes, really, I think it would have been in the B range. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That def definitely could have been. Thor, Love and Thunder. I'm going B plus. So I don't I don't feel like I could put it in the A realm, but I, I did like it just a tad better than Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I think because it was shorter. It was maybe a little more. It was definitely lighter. Um I think that's fair. I, I'm like, I'm almost one of between a B and a B plus. It's like, you're putting the line for the plus. It's like B <laughs> with a little like I in it. That's kind of where I stand. And I talked about this with large on pop fathers. Cause he had seen it and gave like a review on it kind of off the cuff. And he was like, that was a really like good fun movie. And if, if anything, I wish it was longer. And again, we got the extra 10 minutes worth of gore and Jane plot that would have maybe made it all tie together a little more. Cause at the end, I didn't feel like I was as, uh, I won't give anything away. I won't spoil anything, but I just think they could have done more. So you felt more of a connection to the characters when they went through what they were going through. And then future announcements, I gave kind of its own like yep. grade. And for that, I wrote a plus. I think they nailed future announcements at Comic-Con. Fantastic for the only thing, I guess, X-Men, but 
we got some X-Men teased. We got X-Men 97. We know that's coming. I, I, I think they, they nailed their announcements. I, yeah, uh, that's the th- like every time comic I saw people were being like, how does Marvel just keep kicking DC's ass in just the announcement portion? You have the control of it. You have, you can do whatever you want. You have all this money behind it. Uh, I think that's a fair grade to give. Just, and again, this is coming from someone who doesn't know a ton about some of the stuff. I, if there was an X-Men based announcement, I'd be like, oh, I, I'm excited for this, except for that. Yeah. I have no idea what Sacred Evasions is. I don't know what Secret Wars is. I don't, even, I'm still not sure after Jose told me. However, if you go back to our episode with the last one with Jose, where he breaks down everything from the face, if you just hear him go, he just breathes heavy. He's like, <laughs> uh, uh, he just gets so fucking like amped up and excited. I'm like, okay, this is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, I think an A, A plus, whatever you want to give it, A minus. I think in the A realm, it's definitely in the A realm for all that kind of shit. I'm also really excited for Kang because I really like Jonathan Majors. I do like the only thing is there's a lot of moving pieces with this. Do you think they can nail them all down? But again, Trustafagi is like basically the motto of this podcast. So we have to. All right. Now, as a whole, Marvel made you review B? B. Yep. I would say B. Yeah. And if it was maybe another studio, it could be higher. Um, there will be people who think it's lower because they expect more from Marvel too, right? Yep. So that's that's yep. fair. But I think I think a, a fair B where it's like – it's. It, if you're adding in kind of like Dr. Strange and Thor are by no means, I, I don't think, or, well, I think Dr. Strange is going to be much more of a bigger part of the MCU in these phases than he was mm-hmm. in the past. Actually, that's probably not fair to Thor either. I was going to say they're not mere the main guys, but now that Iron Man is they gone, are. they are kind of the main guy shit. So I, I could maybe see like where those movies, you know, I, I hold every Marvel movie where it's a standalone, not an Avengers or even a guardians movie, which are like so close to my heart. Like Iron Man is kind of like the the peak. They're not there, but I'd say they're probably a tier below. You know, like yeah. that kind of that kind of level. And now DC, this one's going to get really interesting. Interesting, very interesting, because we're kicking it off with Peacemaker, <laughs> which I'm giving an A plus to. A plus, hundred percent, A plus. So, like anyone that had you know any trouble in school, I was pretty good in school. Once I hit like end of high school and college, I had a couple semesters that were a little, you know, we had some, some turbulence <laughs> on the flight, we'll say, <laughs> but you get that a plus that fucking is leading yeah. you right off the bat. So, okay. DC is looking pretty good off the jump. And then we get the Batman right away. <laughs> and again, I know you're, you're probably not going to go as strong as I am, but I'm going to go a plus. You're going to go a plus. I'm going to go. I, I, I have to try to think like, I think I was in like the, did I do the balls review of it? I can't remember, but I think I probably settled on a B when I look back at it yeah, now. I think all it things was around considered. That for you, yeah. Okay. A plus and a B the first two months of the year, or when did that come out? I mean, th- first that was three March. Of the year? I think that was like March 5th or something. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, if this is the sports analogy, it's like, all right, they beat the Patriots 56 0 week one, and, you know, they <laughs> beat the fucking like Rams like 28 20. Like, we're having a good start so far. And uh, that's about it, though. <laughs> My next thing I listed is just delayed all of their movies. And for that, I gave them a C. And I was being pretty nice about that, to be honest. Bob Fox is a very generous professor right there. Because That was nice. That was like, listen, I know you have some troubles going on at home, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly the kids coming in you can tell they haven't showered there's some dried up tears oh, on their face their eyes are red there's I'm some gonna shit keep going you above on. a failing grade for as yeah. long as i possibly can here uh, you know you know what you are you're fucking robin williams to go hunting it's not your fault yeah it's, it's not, not your fault, fault. It's <laughs> just not give your him fault. a hug Ooh, and then okay canceled batgirl i gave them a d because i i wanted to go f but what i have listed last is an F and that's the flash became an international terrorist. (laughs) (laughs) And for that, I give you an F that's an F. So if that's the floor canceling Batgirl has to be above that. Ezra Miller is a fucking problem for the rest of society. (laughs) He's an absolute menace to society right now. So how do you grade a mid-year review with an A plus, an A plus, a C, a D, and an F? And the F is like an F minus. Like it couldn't be a worse F. That F counts towards like 50% of your grade point average. Yeah, exactly. And again, the A just carries your GPA. The F just fucking destroys it. It's almost at the point where, I don't know if you ever did this. You were in, you were only in college for a semester, right? Yeah. 
I don't know if you could even do this in high school or you're, but like when you know that bad things are going to happen, you just drop the class after like a month or two and you're like, oh, I ain't yeah. coming, you know, and I did it in college once, once or twice. And it, it saved my GPA for sure. And it got my parents off my back. And they were like, you know, all right. And you take a summer class, easy peasy, fucking do it online. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't really do that where you're just dropping the entire fucking cinematic catalog. That's kind of a cheating way to go about, uh, you know, getting your grades up here. So you do have to be pretty, pretty tough. I, we basically DC is the three dragon meme where it's the two fierce dragons, peacemaker on one head, uh, the Batman on the other. And then the fucking dragon with like the cross eyes and the tongue out of its mouth is the entire rest of the cinematic universe. It's unbelievable. They've just completely botched that. So, uh, I don't even know how you compute a grade when it's all said and done with an A plus. A B. I have no idea. I have no idea how you compute this grade. Like, uh, uh, give them a, a C minus overall because I like they made a, one of my favorite movies, maybe my favorite movie of the year, and arguably my favorite television show of the year. Yeah, if if I hadn't watched The Boys and like got three seasons worth of content yeah. i'd say peacemaker was my favorite i have it above peacemaker personally but i was obs- i mean wigwam peacemaker, asked- i feel like i could go back and rewatch the whole first season 100 percent, and it'll be the show i look most like real probably my top three shows for whenever it's announced for season two right and then the batman they laid the groundwork for what should be uh, you know tr- unless they just cancel those movies down the road so that's the other thing it's like <laughs> if I they can't do tr- that i'm coming for them <laughs> I can't, yeah, I can't trust you, DC. If DC was in the Barstool Sportsbook, I cannot responsibly bet it to win week to week. Money line, spread, nothing. I don't know what the fuck, like, are they going to show up every single week? It's like, oh, no, I'm not talking about, like, they may come out and play flat. I don't know if they're going to show up for the game. The the visiting locker room will just be empty because they just fucking stopped playing. What are we doing, DC? Come on, man. Yeah, they they said don't show up for the game. We want a tax return. (laughs) <laughs> yeah we want a tax return oh god I, I haven't really been like had my pulse on the the internet or like i feel like nerds are just losing their shit over this and they're just losing like, their shit of course yeah, yeah of course of course always yeah they're gonna I mean, have to release another snyder verse or some sort of verse on us uh, well they're gonna release the batgirl thing like your brother the mike yeah. fox dropping fucking knowledge on us and the, the 90s the 90s <laughs> episode was one of my favorite episodes because it was just an hour yeah. of pure or Nine, hour and a half of pure uncut nostalgia but your brother coming out and saying it was them who are then everyone's going to say hashtag release Batgirl and then they're going to release and it's going to do numbers that they never would in a million years done if they did a regular release was one of the best conspiracy theories I've ever heard by far I mean he's right even if it's not a conspiracy this has brought more attention to Batgirl than it ever had so I had no idea about again this isn't saying much after the first you know whatever the of the episode I had no idea backer was even being made so when they canceled like, yeah. all right one thing I'm not gonna have to review for, for my mom's basement this does go well into our first question here in the mailbag we have a couple questions from the fans Tom Kinsley wrote in fix the DCEU Re- recast or retain the Justice League members who gets solo movies what's the major team up storyline it leads to this is a good question. It's I'm not sure I have the answer to it solely. I thought they were headed in a good direction before Ezra Miller went and did, you know, what he did with Flashpoint cuz that's a good like multiverse type thing where you could do this now at this point. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I have no idea what you do. I do like the idea of retaining some of the Justice League members, but I think you got to do it in a way where I think even though Wonder Woman 1984 stunk, Gal Gadot, I think, is one of the strongest members, one Mm -hmm. of the most recognizable members. I think you keep her around as Wonder Woman. I would love for them to keep Henry Cavill around as Superman. I think he has a lot of fans. People, like, really want him to be Superman. He hasn't gotten the best opportunities at being Superman. Like, especially I'd like to see him as a more positive Superman or something. This is going to be not a popular statement. I like Ben Affleck as Batman. Hmm. I, I don't think he's that bad. I think he's had bad material. But him in the role as Batman Bruce Wayne, I think it works. I would keep him as well. I'd keep your your trinity there. Jason Momoa as Aquaman, I would probably also keep. The rest may be recast, which the rest meaning what? Like Cyborg, who will never do a DC movie ever again because he hates yeah. DC, and The Flash. So, like, I think you got to do something where, what well, fuck, you can't keep them all around. Maybe you you can Affleck because he doesn't seem like he wants to be around for the long run anyway. Yep. You get a new Batman. Maybe you make Keaton the Batman there, or you do Batgirl instead, or you do Batman Beyond with Keaton in that role. But I think you got to do something where 
this DCEU, even though people will say it's disrespectful, is revealed to be like not the main DCEU. <laughs> yes, like you take, I like you it. take some of the characters from it and they go over like they failed. That's the overall mission is that like they failed. Dark side fucking takes over D the DCEU, destroys the world, but they get into another world. Dark side is still coming after them in the other multiverse, but they're able to, you know, try to save it this time. And it's almost a meta thing of like, we fucked up the first time, but we're going to try to fix it this time. Okay. So you're saying like a couple of the ca the cast members that you keep survive that, but everyone you're not yeah. like, like Affleck's dead. They survive it and have the memory of it. Like we can't fuck that up again. We need yeah. to be more positive and, and not as dark and wear more colors. I kind of <laughs> we're, we're <colors. laughs> I just love the checklist and what we're more colors number one. I, I'm all for just yeah, k k kill some people so you know, all right, this shit is real. Hard reset. We go from there. Cause again, it worked in the um in Doctor Strange where it's like this fucking earth is now fucked now because their Illuminati is got absolutely worked by Scarlet Witch. Uh I mean, let's be honest. We throw James Gunn in; he's gonna fix this shit. So we could we could just do that again. I couldn't even give you a directors. I'd say throw like have maybe like an Illuminati for the DCU, and there are you could probably tell me more people than I would know. James Gunn would be on that if he's not the head honcho of it all. Kevin Smith should be on the board at all times, right? How, has Kevin yeah, Smith yeah, had his yeah. fingerprints on any of this stuff that's been going no. on with the DC? Okay, no. so then we're good. Um, I as as a Pretty casual DC fan, even though I like the comic books growing up. Like, this is probably what every guy who's in charge of DC says, but it's like, my thing would be like, let's fix Superman. Let's fucking yeah. like make it. Let's make a great movie. And we're not going to a stop. Positive until... movie. Like, yes. Make it positive. Not Superman snapping necks and ah. <laughs> like, he's Superman. Give him the little fucking curl. Put him in the blue thing. Give him the undies back. Have him, you know, land a plane. Do, do the fun stuff. And you, like, watch, all right, the guy, whoever does the boys, that guy, fix fucking Superman. Because you could be like, oh, Superman at this point would be, like, beloved by people, but then there'd be people like, this fucking, you know, corny motherfucker. And he is. He's like a heart of gold. He's Mike Trout, right? This guy yeah. is awesome, but, like, he probably turns some people off or they have all their conspiracy theories, just like everything else. Get a good Lex Luthor. Boom. Superman fixed that. Get the guy that fucking made Top Gun Maverick to make a Superman movie. <laughs> there you go. The just Batman. the positive, like, you know, it's it's a movie by the end of it. You just feel good leaving the theater. You're like, all right, that was fucking badass. People literally cheering at the screen just because, you yeah. know, something fictional is happening with a bunch of special effects. I don't know much about this character, but I feel like the Green Lantern has mm -hmm. to be like I feel like if they, like the Green Lantern could be kind of your springboard or maybe he isn't the biggest uh, hero in the books but he's fucking well known and if you get the right actor to play him he can fucking crush they're doing and a show they say they're doing a show i think jj abrams is involved a, a, a green lantern show and i think a show is actually a good way to do it because there are other factions of lanterns the red lanterns the yellow lantern okay you'd almost do it thrones like where it's like we have you know this faction's attacking us now we have to make peace with this faction like bring in the justice league if you need to for a big event like uh, Green Lantern is one that you got to capitalize on. Doesn't really yep. matter. I don't think I don't think it matters what version you go with either. I think there's multiple versions that are all very popular. Hal Jordan and there's there's all different lanterns, but I, I think that's definitely correct. Can you imagine? Like, think about what Marvel did in the Infinity Saga. And they did it with one hand behind their back because they didn't have Spider-Man. They didn't yeah. have Spider-Man for almost the entire fucking time. They didn't have the X-Men. They didn't have the Fantastic Four. And they still gave us... Daredevil, I feel like before the MCU, is one yeah. of their more famous heroes. Can you imagine DC being like, all right, you can't use Batman, Superman, or Wonder Woman. Good luck. And maybe it would have worked being for them. Like, no, yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, like, when we say trust the Feige, that's, the, like, that's the, such a huge reason for it. But it's like, you guys have all your people, and Again, this is from the outside looking and don't know much about the character. I feel like Green Lantern is almost like the Iron Man of DC, where it's like he's by no means like the number one or two guy there, but he's still fucking good. And if you if you yeah. do the character right, it can be done. And I just watched an entire series with made-up characters I've never heard of before in The Boys. And I was fucking – my wife and I were both zoned in the entire time and absolutely in love with it. And whether this universe is you know, a little cornier, a little more raw, whatever it may be. You can do whatever you want, man. It's 2022. You throw this shit on streaming. You don't got to release it in the theaters. There's so many options to you. Just make the right decision. And again, we talked about it. Like this whole thing with HBO Max and where these shows are going. Like 
whoever's in charge of that has to just stop fucking shit up. Like, make your decision and go with it. And then, you know, from there, plug the puzzle pieces in. Uh, Burner605 wrote in, said, how much would a ticket cost for Jesus at Red Rocks? <laughs> Very funny after the oh. whole AB thing. Um, I, I'll say this. However much it would cost, you could get $20 off that ticket Boom. at game time using promo code MMB. How about that? My man, Bob um, Fox, always closing. Our guy, Peter Fonseca, wrote in, Marry, Fuck, Kill, Plane Edition. This one Ooh. was surprisingly tough. The X-Men Blackbird, the Avengers Quinjet, and the Batman Batwing. Mm. Now, would it be tougher if I swapped one of these with the Guardians ship for, for you? Milano? Yeah. I, I almost feel like... I don't know. I feel like you're going to choose Batwing above all, right? Batwing is my marry, of course. Yeah. And I, you, I think it, that's the most badass ship. When he comes in with it, cuts the fucking balloons in Batman 89, That that's my shit right there. I also have to think, it is a little more badass. It's definitely more badass, but it's also a solo ship where the other three are like team ships. So let's yeah. swap out Bat, the Batwing for the Milano. Is that for fair? For you, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, for both of us. You have oh, to get for both because because yeah, I, I would try that wing as my too. yeah 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 all right yeah. yeah. There is something about being like a one character thing that makes it like more awesome in in all things. So ooh. I feel like the X Men one. I just that's probably just definitely my bias showing, but I'm gonna marry that. Uh, and then the the Avengers one is cooler. The Milano has more character though. I think that's kind of just like the the Guardians movies versus the Avengers movies. So, but I'm so I guess I'm gonna fuck the Guardians and then I'm gonna kill the Avengers one, uh, the Quadra. But while also maintaining, it's probably a much more fun uh, ship to ride. What about you? Yeah, I, I I swap slightly. I'm going to marry the Milano. I love the orange, the character, the little uh, side ship, the escape pod that they go off in Infinity War. They got it back too. What, they give it a little. Even bit the of charm? interior, to yeah, even the interior. I feel like we've had so many scenes there yeah. that I'm so familiar with it. Even when they get trapped on it in Endgame, and it's just Tony Stark and uh, Nebula <laughs> playing paper football and stuff. I'm gonna marry that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna fuck the Blackbird, the X Men ship, and I hate Clip to it. say it. Clip that line. <laughs> I hate to say it. I'm going to kill the Quinjet. I feel like the Quinjet is cool, but it, it, I don't know. It's just a silver. Like you said, it doesn't have a lot of character. Yeah. There's, there's something missing from it. Maybe we'll get something that's a just little. Just reminds cool. me of that sad moment with the Hulk going off in the Quinjet. And he's got the message from Black Widow. That's true. We had a lot of emotional shit going on, you know, with the Quinjet in our lives. And the thing is, you'd think Tony Stark would have something a little cooler, a little more. Cause I'm saying yeah. maybe the next Avengers movie will have a cooler ship, but I mean, it's, Who's going to make something cooler than Tony Stark, right? So that's the only uh, thing. That maybe, a bit uh, maybe like Rocket Raccoon could help uh, Bruce Banner. That could work. Okay. Okay. Or, maybe. or maybe you get uh, Ironheart in there. Ironheart's a good tech genius, right? I heard her show is going to be like kind of like tech versus magic. There's going to be supernatural elements. The villain's called Red Hood, I think, but not like the other Red Hood. I think it's a different Red Hood. I, I don't know. But I Agatha think- also rumored to be in it. I don't know. <laughs> that's that's yeah. basically how you can like say most of the stuff in the next couple of phases. That does feel like the old, the last phase of Marvel versus the new phase of Marvel, where it's technology versus magic, because we're definitely a lot more into the magical world right now. And then the final question from Ryan Baker, Clem versus anyone on the sus list, who would be the strongest person he could take down, excluding Sparky? Oh, oh thank God. Sparky there. Oh, who would be this who would be the the person on the sus list the strongest person that you could take down you could take down herb from one division for sure yeah. he was on the yeah. sus list he was on the sus list you we have fuck him up like i think at one point wanda was on the sus list definitely could not fuck no, up Wanda. no not not her not her. uh not gonna be able to fuck up agatha because i sniffed her out pretty quickly mm-hmm. uh you be honest what about what about the guy from what about the guy from wandavision that that asshole di- director that was like after her taunting her with vision. Oh, I could take that guy. Yeah. That yeah. guy is like low key short. He has like, sh- ba- like angry short man energy and stuff like that. So <laughs> like I'm, the bagel I'm, boss. Yeah, he, he exactly. comes up to you. He says, you're not my doc. You're not my God. Oh my uh, boss. The, the bagel <laughs> boss is, that was one of the purest videos of all time. I mean, he was an so absolute great. maniac and probably goes, one of the worst goes, Why don't you do something about it? And the guy immediately does something about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm all right. You tell you be honest if I could take this person down, and because I I think I could, but I also think 
this might be the most dangerous person on the entire list. Could I take down Miss Minute? Tell me the truth, but the answer is no. I could just tell my him. Instinct, my immediate instinct was yes. And then I thought about when she just popped up at the end in the He Who Remains castle. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. I mean, what if you reach for her and she just like disappears? Yeah. I'm going to say uh, no. I'm, I'm going gonna to say no. I'm going to say you reach for her, she disappears, and then there's a knife in your back before you even know it. Yeah. She's like in my body and like claw- climbs her way yeah. out, which like again, an that's- alien. Yeah. Like comes out your chest. Yeah. <laughs> It's so a at brutal least, death. Yeah, it's no. a brutal death. <laughs> so I guess Herb is the answer. I think I can take Herb. It would, Herb, it, it you would, could take. Yeah, it would be a dust. Herb up. was a big guy too. That that's like that's a respectable. That's like a dad fight you would get into with him. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's a video. You would actually have to blog it. You know, afterwards you'd be like, "Dad's fight at softball game." Just murdered a dad because uh, you know I was mo- <laughs> he got mad at me for mowing my lawn at eight fifty five instead of nine a.m. So <laughs> I, I have a yeah. I have a murder rap. I don't know if that'd be that would be murder, not manslaughter. Manslaughter would be a mistake. So yeah, definitely. Mur- yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Is there a hero or a villain named Manslaughter? Because I thought that'd be an awesome uh, super villain name. That is pretty good, right? Let's look up. Let's look up manslaughter comics. Oh yeah, manslaughter. Earth six one six. Oh, we're in six one six too. Beautiful. Marvel. Yeah, his name. His name is manslaughter. Does he look uh, metal? Roger Loomis. A little mm-hmm. bit. He actually wears like an interesting. It's almost like an eye patch he wears over his face, but it, with a hole cut out. So it's not an eye patch. It doesn't actually <laughs> cover his eye. It's, it's like an inverse eye patch. Yeah, it like covers everything but the eye. Yeah, and he he fights the defenders. Okay. That, okay. That's that's who he's after. So he Angel, Moon Dragon, Valkyrie. Okay, he fights Valkyrie, our girl. This guy is goofy as fuck, Bob. He, yeah, he's goofy looking. He's really goofy looking. I don't like this guy at all. He's snapping in the picture. <laughs> I he him. is. His and not like Thanos snapping. snapping. No, <laughs> he's, no. He's got a satchel. He's got a purple satchel, a ribbon that looks oh. like he won, won like the number one ham at the festival. <laughs> I'm gonna throw it on the the YouTube here. Can, can you see it? Oh yeah! Look, I'm adding it to the stream. Here we go. That's this manslaughter, guy's... folks. How did he get the name manslaughter? He has he has a lapel or something, and it's like some red coming out of it, which it looks is, like a bullet. Is, wait, wound, is his name is cool. Man's Laughter? It might be Man's. It, that would make a lot more. <laughs> that would make a lot. More he looks sense. way more like a man's laughter than a men's slaughter. Manslaughter. However, I'm um, here. There's a guy named Manslaughter Marsdale. And Bob, oh, a different guy. Oh, okay. oh no, this is manslaughter. This All is right. manslaughter. Can I put this? Can you put this manslaughter on yeah, the screen? Yeah, I'll put this one up right now. This is the guy um, that should be. Uh, I don't know what his what his bio says, but this guy is, this is manslaughter. Is exactly what I'm. When I think manslaughter, this guy is some badass shit right here. This is almost like a kingpin. Yes, he has breast knuckles on both hands. Yeah, <laughs> both hands. That's pretty- amazing Spider-Man uh, first appearance as well. He's a Spider-Man Perfect. villain, so he's not going for you know the the random heroes here and there. He's going for fucking Spider-Man. That that's it, manslaughter. It's kind of bullshit that he has to throw the name at the end, manslaughter Marsdale. It's like one in one a as to circle. It's like when, when you join the Screen Actors Guild. Yeah, like you got to have D-Lo. Like a, Michael B. <laughs> Jordan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that's the real manslaughter on this podcast. He needs to kill the original manslaughter, then take his name. That's big because they're both that'll be, 616. We'll go to Marvel one day to pitch them a comic, and that'll be our pitch. It's, it's I, just a manslaughter story. I guarantee Feige would be like, yes, I've been thinking that for yeah. years, guys. It's, it's on like the whiteboard. With, like he's three like, rooms he's, down. He got the fucking brass knuckles on both hands. And be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> manslaughter Marsdale. <laughs> All right. Uh, should we do hashtag manslaughter? That seems a bit dark. Probably Fuck not. It. Let's get dark. Manslaughter. Right. I Manslaughter. mean, there's going to be some harsh results coming up when we do. Don't that, click the hashtag, though. Yeah. Don't <laughs> click the hashtag. But if you made it to the end, you know, hashtag manslaughter. Thank you for listening to oh. this grab bag edition of the show. I had a blast. I, this was this was a lot of fun. I want ever. I want to see everyone's grades for uh for for Marvel and DC. You give us what you think. Like I, the video. I, there, and way, Star like Wars. Give us your Star Wars. We'll oh, do yeah. that on a. We'll have do we, a Star. Have we Obi Wan? I guess is the only thing. Is that the only thing? It was just okay. Yeah. I thought we had something else. Okay, yeah. So th- I don't think that's worth. Um, definitely not worth a grade because it's just the Obi Wan grade. So yeah, give us Andor your DC and Marvel soon, though, in September. Andor looks sick. Reviews we'll have a out. we'll have Good a Star reviews. Wars end of year review based on everything. Yeah. If there's if there's two other projects or something. And of like course, that. a Marvel end year review. A DC too. Are we getting Shazam by the end of this year? Looks okay. 
If we are, it's going to get taken off. We, I've, I've, learned, <laughs> I've learned enough with DC. Marvel, we got Wakanda forever, which looks fucking incredible. Yeah, that's going to be dope. And the Halloween special, I think. And yeah, Hulk, that, obviously, next are, week. So, Oh, wait. Is it the Christmas? It's a Christmas special. Christmas special, too. I forgot about that. But I believe Halloween special is coming this year. For who? Werewolf by Night. Whoa. And it's, di- and it's directed... And it's directed by Michael Giacchino, who's the the score guy for the Batman and Spider Man. Okay, all right. So we have. Uh, so I think Mar- it's this year. I think uh, I don't think I'm mistaken. Could be this year. Marvel just has shit on the calendar, which puts it safely ahead of DC yeah. in the bigger in the big content race of uh, comic the comic content race. So yeah, give us your DC and Marvel uh, reviews in the in the YouTube comments. And subscribe, dude. Cl- clear twenty five thousand subscribers. Twenty five k. Yeah, yeah. To Bobby we're, Tox. we're a quarter of the way to getting that plaque. Imagine getting that my mom's basement plaque. Oh, the put haters that up in the office. That feel so nice. Sick. And that so, feel are you going to so turn nice. the lights off? Well, here, put, put yeah. this plaque over the light. You can't turn the lights off. There's a plaque <laughs> over the light, can you? Third floor. Subscribe. Help in. us get there. Come yeah. on. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Get us the plaque. That's going to be the next hash. That's going to be the hashtag. Get us the plaque. Get us yeah. the plaque. All right. See you guys next week. <laughs>